Oh, it looks like plenty of light in there. Yeah, no, it's just I only got one light on today. But the, oh, it, that's why. No, really, because it, it looks good there. I know this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about something. Uh, this sounds like something a parent would tell their kids, doesn't it? Yeah. But you know, it applies more than you would think. No, but um, it's just you know, like. Uh, you know, be proud of what you do. If you did it, I mean, I, I, I'm gonna go. I mean, I go back. I mean, really a long time. I and mean, I had, um, uh, you know, one of my. I had a guest lecturer, which was Orson Welles, and Orson Welles said simply, "If you're not proud of what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it." See, and and the reason this came up is I do have a friend. Well, actually, as you know, I do have friends that are actors as well as actresses, and sometimes they're happy with the roles they play. Sometimes. They're not happy with the roles they played, or somehow they didn't care for how it got edited. Oh yeah, they've been. They had a bigger part when they started out, and then it got thrown away. Or the movie wasn't exactly what they thought it was going to be. Okay, I can tell you this: when I was in college, I I filmed a stupid. We we were doing a we we're doing a um, a film for our film class, and the director, who actually became a really big name. Uh, decided he wanted to do something a little bit more daring. So what happened was, the guy and the girl basically, they were really having a good time with one another on camera, and that was not what we had signed on in the class to do. But it did so, it, it, you know, it, it did so well when they showed the short off the campus that the director basically he did get thrown out of college because it was the dean's daughter that was in the movie. But it built, it, it, his career started with a porn flick, <laughs> you know, and, you know, of which he tried to hide later in his life. Well, see, okay, now I understand why he might have wanted to try and hide it, because the dean's daughter was in it. Yeah. Um, but typically, see, part of it is, is we all do things that we wish we could hide. Everybody does it. God, okay, oh. uh, I mean, <laughs> everybody, no, but for instance, everybody knows I danced in movies. Right. Everybody knows. I mean, I'm doing pirouettes, and I'm doing... You know, and uh, you know what happens is only so many people are stars in musicals. That's right. Everybody else is the guy that sits there. You know, he's waiting to go on. He's off stage. You're waiting for a moment, trying to keep warm. And he goes on. He does his thing. What happens is um, uh, a lot of people that basically were dancers like me became dramatic actors. Like on, um, let's put it this way. Uh, everybody, any, anybody watched the movie Bandwagon? With Fred Astaire and Sid Charisse, the guy that was a choreographer and for the you know, you know doing the choreography in the movies became a god awful famous actor in soap operas, mm. and uh, he's proud of some of the things he did as a dancer and not proud of other things he did as a dancer. The things he's proud of, he lets everybody know about, like Bandwagon. The things that he's not proud of, was somebody else. <laughs> but the problem is, is when you do them, uh, actors will do things. Uh, for multiple reasons, when they're, when you're starting out, you basically got to do everything you can. We get we get we get we get stopped for many reasons at times. But um, like I said, that um, we you, when you're an actor, you have to do a lot of things that you really wish you didn't have to do. Well, I mean, you remind me of um, I remember you were talking about Dustin. Was it Dustin Hoffman who did what, like one movie a year? Yeah. And then he, right. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm you know one movie a year. I'm. Uh, I'm 30 years old. I actually started out late in the business. I'm 30 years old. You know, I'm not going to be around by the time I'm 50. You know, I've still got two thirds of my life ahead of me if I want to do things different. 40 years old. Uh, I'm 40 years old. I still got more than half of my life ahead of me. I got plenty of time to do things. You know, commercially because he used to do things that were non-commercial product. You know, he did like little big man's commercial, but that most of the stuff wasn't. I'm 50, oh God, I'm 50 years old. My life is half, more than half over. Maybe I should get my rearing gear. Mm -hmm. And then he gets to 60 years old, and he said, my life's almost over, and he started doing multiple movies a year, you know, like armies of things like... Um, like the Falkers. Yeah, you know, you know, the Falkers, and just one thing after another. Just lots of movies because he spent a lifetime with no background, nothing. And uh, I mean, I know um, my father. Would, my father knew uh, Charlton Heston really well. He knew he knew Tony Curtis really well because he met him in World War II. And Charlton Heston would do one thing a year, no matter what. He he had a deal with uh, talking to Henry Fonda. Henry Fonda, he said, you know, I think my father was at the meeting. He said, kid, you know, 
what she called it, you know, like they're about the same age, called it kid, you know, Henry, yeah. he's also like this. And um, but Henry Fonda had a far more distinguished career at that point than did than did Heston. And uh, and then he said, you know, you, you've only done like 20 movies in 20 years. And he said, yeah. And he said, I do. I've done 20 movies in a year. That's a lot. I, you know, and he said, well, how could you do it? And he said, well because you have to do nine piles of crap so that you can have the leverage to do that one good movie. Because he said, you don't get that one good movie unless you have a background of bringing people into the theater. Mm -hmm. And then and, and my father, you know, and Preston basically got the idea, he started doing more like television and stuff. And, and um, But and then he had Tony Curtis, and you know, Tony Curtis, we talked, God, he said, you know, I'm really ashamed of, you know, you know, of doing the you know Alibaba up on up on Mulholland Drive. You know, this is the home of me father. You know, and and he said, but Janet says it pays for the bills. Mm -hmm. So, and she said, you you think that she wanted to be in my sister Eileen? You know, where she's dancing around and, well, and she, you know. It makes me think of who, who's the actor of the SpongeBob. Uh, oh, uh, Charles, uh, uh, Ernest Borgnine is in SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. Yeah. So do you? It's basically you do what you have to do. Okay. Um, here, here's the thing. Um, you I do have, what you need to do to pay the bills. You do what you have to pay the bills, and you. you get um, the people will hire the people that are reliable. They're the ones they know that will shut will show up to do the stupid things. I mean. It sounds um, like regular work. It sounds like regular work. I mean, I, I've been accused by so many people over on on Turner Classic Movies of being, you know, crowding a scene with people. No, it's what I was told to do. Because I, if anybody in the industry knows what a floater is, he basically floats in and out of his thing. He doesn't have much to do, but he's basically, they, they got, uh, he, he's, he's more than an extra because he actually has a part. A real part. Hey, you're probably one of the most recognizable floaters. Yeah. A lot of people recognize me. The ones that I really hate is the ones, you know, when I get my hat off, oh, God, that really is blonde hair, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, I know you. And like uh, at Costco, the woman starts singing, you know, and uh, she said, you know, it's good to, you know, at our age, we still have voices like we did when we were young. I must have worked with her, but I could not remember. Well, she's like, 70 some years old and looks 70 some years old. I had no clue who she was, but I have, okay, the one distinguishing factor besides my blonde hair, I'm actually the same weight as, more or less the same weight as my ears. My ears tend to stand out a lot. When I have lots of hair, they get covered, but when, you know, I cut my hair back almost every week, so my ears will stand out several times a week, so they recognize me. I used to do everything, and I would do it, you know, uh, we've done it before. You know, somebody would, actors are the most unreliable people on the face of this planet. If you get a better job, you take the better job and say to hell with the one you had. Especially like if you're a dancer and you get an opportunity to do a dramatic part. Or a singer, you get an opportunity to do a dramatic part. You just split. And what they would call up, my, my grandmother and my father, and they, you know, can your kid be available at 12 o'clock? And they, you know, they said, well, okay, we'll get him out of school. You know, and then, you know, like Elizabeth Taylor would show up in a limousine, a cute little girl, and they, you know, pick me up and they said, oh my God, is that? And they said, he knows her well enough. And I didn't, I didn't matter. I, I did four things with her, never really met her. I got to set me with her. You know, she had a better box lunch than we did because she was Elizabeth Taylor. But I also got to eat with, you know, you know with uh, Bobby Blake, and I got to eat with, uh, you know, uh, Dean Stockwell and Jane Withers. Oh, God, that's really helpful. Zane Withers played Josephine the Plumber. She's been retired for decades. I used to I'd have lunch with her. But um, we all did stupid things. If the biggest stars did stupid things that maybe they were ashamed of, but they still did them in order to advance their career. I mean, Elizabeth Taylor sang opera in a movie with Wallace Berry playing the father who's learning to do the tango from Carmen Miranda with Jane Powell, who is an opera singer. Uh, okay, as they put it, Elizabeth Taylor has a pleasant little voice, but Jane Powell has this big booming soprano. So you think that she really enjoyed doing that thing? Uh -uh. No way on earth. But um, but we we both know people that basically almost will not even take responsibility for the stuff they did. 
you know. No, well, you know, part of it is you see both of us on a daily basis, and so you see us do some things that, okay, you think are pretty stupid sometimes, probably. Or you know, you're scratching your head, and where did they come up with that? Yeah. But this, this is us. No, this is all unscripted, and we sit there and talk and discuss about different things. Right. But part of it is, is if I had to, if we can only put up things that I approved and I like the way I looked and I liked it, da 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 da, we probably wouldn't put up hardly anything. No, it's just if they're at our, because what happens is if we have to have approval from anybody, that we basically ax out whatever it is. But it's too much trouble. We got to put up trouble. too much work. Because. I mean, okay, everybody knows that I am considerably older than her. I'm even older than that now that I found out. I'm kind of older than what I was told I was. So, but um, uh, I tend to make far more mistakes than she does on camera because I'm trying to remember things that are 60 years ago. And her point of reference is a lot closer than 60 years. I mean, I've done 60 years of 3D stuff. And as I found out, we you know, um, let's see, I've been in the business for 69 years now, not 64. Because I didn't, I just, okay, when you're young, you don't pay any attention. You know, uh, I did not, I, okay, we, we were talking about before. I had the, I think I lost the 1950s entirely. I, I vaguely remember, and it wasn't because I was taking anything. I got off of was working a lot in the 50s. I mean, I've done... 1,200 appearances in my life. You don't think there's a lot of stuff in there that I I tend to want to never remember that I did. I did a lot of bad sci-fi stuff. I did a lot of bad 3D stuff. I played, I played, I played, I, I mean, put it this way. I grew up in an era where I was playing half-breeds, uh, you know, the half-breed Indian kid on the screen, and then I go to school, and hey, there's that half-breed. You know, that dirty half-breed, you know, really fun. I'm, I'm walking with blonde hair in school. In the movie, I've got dark hair, but he's that dirty, filthy half-breed. I don't think we want to play, you know, we don't want to have him in our, you know, our group, so mm -hmm. I guess separated. But uh, those are the ones I really did not like. I tend to try to forget those things. I remember the fact that I did get an Emmy nomination. I remember that one very plainly. Yeah. You know, the real... The real tough macho man dressed in black that saunders in the beginning of the show and doesn't say anything. He just looks and you have a movie you know, with Chill Wills and um, uh, 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 Chill Wills is Slim Pickens. I don't know who the hell that man is. But I feel sorry for the kid because that's mean, one mean looking son of a bitch. I didn't do anything. I just looked good dressed in black and I saundered a lot. You know, that was my character because I carried. Uh, and the thing is, sometimes a bit player is actually the reason the project exists. But um, it's just uh, uh, there are a lot of things where the bit player part is basically, like I said, um, like they got a show on called The Colorado Kid called Heaven, Haven's, um, Haven on, on, uh, uh, on Sci-Fi Channel. Haven is based upon a bit thing by, by uh, Stephen... Um, there's a guy that wrote this stupid Shining, but uh, but you know he basically it's called the Colorado Kid. The Colorado Kid is a minor character, and they based the entire thing on a minor thing. This whole television series was wrapped around a character running from me. For 13 weeks, the series lasted. The character ran from me, and there was never any never any ending to it because the show was canceled. You know, it'd been a been a television miniseries for like four different times. They decided which is almost always a mistake, is to make it into a TV series because then what they like was the fact that they were two hour long things that they now made into 45 minutes. It didn't work. But, um, but I mean, um, you know, she's basically done, I mean, God, we have to worry about the things that she's done that are embarrassing, so. <laughs> yeah, would you like to know? Yeah. <laughs> now, okay, what a lot of people don't understand is that she did have a career in the entertainment business uh, before Not A Spring Chick came around and Bikini's Art came after that. She did have a very lucrative career. The only problem was she didn't make any money off of it. Other people I didn't did. get paid. She didn't get paid for it. She's from an era when that didn't happen. So she tended to basically block that stuff out. But she still, you know, she still claims it if she sees it. 
but uh, I, I just don't understand. If you want to be an actor, you have to act. Um, you know, I did things because it was fun. I stopped doing things because I got older. Because I got older, I couldn't do the things that I did. Do. They want. Okay, what happened was, they wanted to make me uh, play people in my 40s or 50s or 60s, and. I really didn't care to play people in my 40s, 50s, and 60s that were basically in heavy dramas. Uh, they didn't dance anymore. They didn't do much comedy. They didn't do westerns. They didn't do war stuff. They didn't, weren't doing the sci-fi stuff. So what happened was I moved from in front to the back side of the camera, which I've been doing for years. There was a lot of stuff behind the camera you don't want to remember you did also. No, but uh, I really need some really bad sci-fi movies behind the camera too. But still, I'm, I'm back out. I mean, after being, I, I was not in front of the camera for a quarter of a century, and now I'm as old as I am, I'm back again, and I actually am, people are wanting me to do stuff again, so, which I don't really want to do. I don't want to play some guy 80 years old. But, <laughs>